All right, welcome to our Friday Naturally You class. My name is Callie Lemoyne, for those of you that don't know who I am. And I'm really excited today to share with you on how to detox your skincare. Um, I am a licensed esthetician. I have been licensed for uh, eight years now, right? It'll be nine this summer. Holy cow, doesn't seem like. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. Um, along my skincare journey, um, I've always, from a little girl, I've always just been, now that I look back, um, interested in skin, nails. Um, my mom got me, I know we've talked about this on a class before, but it was like a teen book and it had like different categories and I got little inserts. I can't remember the name of it, but I know we've talked about this before, but it came with like how to do a manicure, how to take care of your skin. Um, I don't, I, it was just kind of like a growing up type thing. And so it had some of those things in it. My mom, my grandmother have always, uh, take, taken really good care of themselves. Self-care is not an issue, um, <laughs> for me. Um, and that has just been taught to me by them. Uh, so along the journey, um, I was introduced to, um, a holistic approach to skincare on what's happening on the inside of us is what's happening on the outside of us. Our skin is just a map that's showing us uh, what is happening to us internally. And so the last uh, few years of my, when I had my skincare business open, which I closed about, will almost be two years this spring to focus fully on doTERRA, um, was really focusing on healing healing what was going on internally to fix what was going on the outside and learning all these things that cause inflammation that are done we think that's the way um to take care of this the skin and i'm, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time i will address a few skin issues during this but i really wanted to focus on detoxing our current skincare um, so anyway, that's just a little bit about myself. I've been using doTERRA oils um, for regularly for five years now, consistently, and have seen huge improvements um, with my family's health, my health, and being able to address so many things with our pets and, and everything with the oils. So just, I love to share and show others how to do it. So this is going to just touch on, on a few things here. Oh, and if you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat box. I'll try to get through some of these and I'll answer some of your skincare questions at the end. Um, and then we may have to do a whole nother class focusing on just skincare issues on, and what oils. So I'm not going to address too much of that in this class. So are you afraid of aging? Does a wrinkle on your face cause you to panic and make you fear you are becoming unattractive and unemployable, maybe? Do you believe a fragrance can make you irresistible? Are you willing to spend your hard-earned money to buy expensive cosmetics that promise you a cure for whatever flaw you think you may have? So if you answered, um, see if I can... If you answer yes to these questions, you've become a pawn of the manipulative cosmetic industry. These geniuses of marketing have convinced you and most of society of the following. Aging and wrinkles are to be greatly feared. Natural body odors are mortifying and cosmetics can cure anything. <laughs> so I, I guess I could be guilty of this. Um, and it is interesting, you know, they say that if you watch these ads on TV and they say, oh, you know, may cause, you may have this if you have these, these symptoms. I feel like that goes right along with our cosmetic industry. <laughs> so, um, so focusing on like what toxins do to us from all of us trying to obtain this, uh, you know, at, our age, at my age now, you know, where um, I'm starting to see a little bit more aging around my eye area, lip area, um, and focus, you know, we can easily be distracted if we aren't educated on these products we see on TV 
that claim to reverse all of that. But what's lurking in them? <laughs> And I will tell you most of the, everything that you're buying at, uh, let's say Target or even Ulta, uh, your Macy's skincare counter, you're not getting the ingredients that truly uh, can fix your skin. Most are causing inflammation, which is actually causing you to age. So in the beginning, you may see some change with them in your skin. And then after a little while, nothing's gonna change. You stop using the product and you've lost your results. Um, most of them are inflammation based and inflammation as we know isn't very good for our bodies and it can actually cause us to age more so this is what toxins do to us we receive toxins from our environment um, we breathe them in they're in our food um, our skincare products so we're we're getting a huge toxic load whether you like it or not. No matter how clean your home is, if you reduce the toxic load in your home, you're still receiving toxins. So these are things that um, can happen to us. We have chronic driver of, of disease. And I didn't realize this, but a lot of diabetes are caused from toxins. Um, you know, we are seeing more and more ADHD. And I also learned this in my research, lower IQs. And the doctor that presented that um, had stated, you know, he was like, I was thought maybe I was going a little crazy that our society seems to be going a little more crazy lately. <laughs> and we see a lot of this with our children. Um, okay, so mental issues, immune endocrine, endocrine problems resulting in thyroid issues. Then leading also to some skin issues. So eczema, psoriasis, acne, wrinkles can be related to toxins. I did learn that our wrinkles can um, come from food that is uh, cooked too hot and chemicals and it can actually harden our collagen, causing us to have more wrinkles or like, it, that just blew my mind. <laughs> So I will share um, my resources with you guys on where I got a lot of this. It, it, you'll as you'll be um, one of the podcasts I listen to. He talked a lot about our food and the plastics that it's stored in. I've been hunting glass or stainless steel, and it's not that hard to find, or it's hard to find stuff. So um, anyway, I think we could chat about toxins forever. Okay, so back to our cosmetics. Sorry, I got off on a little tangent there, but why are our cosmetic regulations so limited? And as I dove into this, um, regulations were determined uh, more than 70 years ago. And back then they didn't realize, um, they assumed the skin is in a, in the barrier just prevented anything from entering the body. Well, now we do know that that's not true. Um, the FDA cannot uh, fulfill its mission because its scientific base has eroded and its scientific organizational structure is weak. They cannot fulfill its mission because scientific workforce does not have sufficient capacity and capability and cannot fulfill its mission because its information technology or IT infrastructure is inadequate. Also due to funding, uh, the workload and the amount of products that are entering um, from foreign trade that at so many ports, we, they just don't have enough people to test everything. So although the FDNC Act does not require that cosmetic manufacturers, oh my gosh, <laughs> offer marketer or for marketers test their products for safety, the FDA strongly urges cosmetic manufacturers to conduct whatever toxicology or other tests are appropriate to sustain the safety of their cosmetics. Don't mind my spelling. <laughs> Um, if the safety of a cosmetic is not adequately sustained, the product may be considered misbranded and may be subject to regulatory action unless the label bears the following statement. Warning, the safety of this product has not been determined. I didn't proofread that one. <laughs> so another thing that's crazy with the FDA that blew my mind was how, um, anyone can go into the cosmetic business without notifying the FDA. So... I could just uh, go throw some stuff in my kitchen and maybe add a few oils to it and they don't even have to be pure essential oils and I could just put everything I put in there 
put it in a cute little bottle, put a nice little label on it and sell it. So us as consumers, we have to take the responsibility to educate ourselves and to really be conscious of what we're putting on our bodies. Okay, so some of them say that maybe a little bit of toxic, um, toxic substance really isn't harm, harmful. Um, oops. Okay, so is a little bit of toxic substance harmful? Well, would you sweeten your cereal with a little rat poison every day? <laughs> so that's just another little, you know, oh, here are toxin there, toxin there, you know, no big deal. So, okay. I'm just gonna highlight just a few of the things that you want to steer clear of toxins and skincare. Of course, there are so many more um, that you need to be watching for. And one of the resources is uh, ingredients. I would recommend everybody just purchase an ingredient handbook or it's a dictionary that you can just look up products. Um, another thing that I did come across it was an app called, uh, let me pull it up here really quick. Think dirty. And so you can screenshot just the barcode of a product and it will tell you if it like what's in it and what they've marked as safe. And also if you're looking for new products, um, like currently I'm looking for a new mascara, um, but I want a natural one. I don't want to like go away from my beliefs. And so you can search in there for mascaras and then they'll list them and then the ratings if they're clean or not. And even one of the natural ones I was looking at um, said it was all natural just as I was searching for it in Google and it does have some toxic chemicals in it. So a few things that you wanna be, uh, be aware of is fragrance. So that legally hides an untold number of chemicals or trade secrets. So they do not have to reveal what chemicals make up their fragrance. We also have phthalates, which are in a lot of things. Um, so they, in specifically in our skincare, they stabilize fragrance. Um, they also, while in as being a part of that uh, on our system, they can disrupt and block receptors in the body. Para parabens. So um, there's a lot of different ones, and it, it'll say paraben after it. So those are endocrine disruptors that can mimic estrogen, can be harmful. Um, can harm male reproductive system development. So just touching on just a little bit on each of these. Um, formaldehyde, as you can see, is a carcinogen. It also causes allergic reaction, reactions, irritates the eyes and respiratory systems. It's used in hair straightener, nail hardener, and as a preservative. Formaldehyde releasers, similar to the effects of the formaldehyde, and they are chemicals that release formaldehyde over time and also used as the preservative. Tooling, I think is how you would say that. Toxic to the brain, used in nail polish, nail treatments, and hair dye. Um, carbon black, which you might find in uh, mascara, is possibly a carcinogen. Um, Triclosylin affects the thyroid and reproductive hormones. Okay, so a few that, uh, you also want to be aware of our benzoyl peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, phenooxithal, I can't even pronounce that, artificial colors. Oh, I've got that on there twice, so I'm not even going to try to say that. <laughs> I had so much content I wanted to put in here, and I just couldn't, my mind was working on so many steps of it. <laughs> So I do want to share some ingredients not commonly talked about. And although they may not be toxic, they may cause um, inflammation. And this is from Dr. Ben Johnson, his book, Transform Your Skin Naturally. And these were some other products that he, or ingredients he highly advised during Clara. And um, he's also a big proponent of no forced exfoliation. So you may hear you know, people say, oh, you need to get your skin to turn over to reduce your aging, scrub, 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 just because then it makes, it has to perform, make new, new skin, it gets everything going. Well, yes, that's true, but the skin is so smart, it does that on its own, but we think as humans that we can play with it and, and we can outsmart it. So when we over exfoliate, 
it actually causes a wound and it takes away from the skin's natural daily process. And as we age, that slows. So it's robbing its energy to heal the wound and it can actually um, make you age more. So retonic acid, it's a popular um, prescription, also inflames the skin, interferes with the skin's normal turnover and repair process and compromises the epidermis, which is our top layer, which we want to protect our top layer because that's what's keeping us um, from keeping the yuck out. It's protecting us and we treat it so poorly. If we, um, so all of our aging actually happens down in the dermis where the blood is. That's where our wrinkles occur and that thins um, every year. It continues to thin and that's why we get wrinkles as we age. If we were, if our epidermis thinned as fast as the dermis does, we'd bleed out by the age of 50. And you wouldn't be alive. Um, so our skin is not to, designed to have excess retonic acid lying around and we don't store it, which means our skin struggles to remove the excess. So not really knowing exactly how much it needs. Um, hydroquoning or, I. I'm like, I, I suck at saying these, I apologize. But it's used um, as a lightener for hyperpigmentation. It poses some cancer risk, can be toxic to certain organ, and it actually ages the skin. Steroids pre pre prescribe to control inflammation, but they can also lead to trauma, atrophy, and scarring. And antibiotics commonly prescribed to treat rosacea and acne, but their use can compromise your digestive and immune system. So one that might shock you, and I'm going to refer to this one as, as a topical ingredient, is vitamin C, and it can cause inflammation and increase free radicals, but can be used safe in lower concentrations in a dry, and a dry powder form. Um, peptides. So we kind of get tricked with peptides, and they're safe as long as they're used with ingredients that correct the damage. Um, sodium laurel sulfate, sulfate found in face washes and liquid soaps, but studies find that it's an irritant. Um, ceramides, I can never, <laughs> I know how it sounds, but I can't say it. Claim to moisturize dry skin to actually promote aging. And then glycols, propylene glycol, you can see them all there. They actually strip the lipids, lipids, increase free radicals, and cause dehydration. Um, the other ones were to, that he recommended staying with away from were like alpha hydroxy acid, so like your glycolic acid, um, those that force exfoliation, so a chemical peel. Uh, he does believe that. Um, Lactic acid is okay in small doses, like really low doses, because it can actually hydrate the skin. And so that kind of is derivative of a milk type. Um, so be good to your skin. Natural versus organic. So a natural product should not have inflammatory or toxic preservatives like parabens or phenyloxethanol. It should not contain dyes, artificial fragrance, or fillers. Um, so our natural versus organic. Organic is um, government's way <laughs> of, of making some money and it's just really hard and they can even just put the, or if they pay enough money, they can put the organic sticker on it. Um, so not super regulated. The cosmetic industry just isn't really regulated, <laughs> period. So natural, um, can be tough also because of the cost to obtain the product. So they could say it's natural, but although not really that natural and can actually cause harm if they've um, messed with the makeup of it. So the difference between fragrance and essential oils. <laughs> so back to the, where I was talking about the cost. Um, so fragrance, um, we don't know exactly what's in it because they don't have to disclose it to us. They can put essential oils on there, but don't really have to disclose. 
So it's up to us as a consumer um, to know what essential oils we're actually buying and if they're pure essential oils. And um, knowing that fragrance can be hidden in, let's say, so-called pure essential oils. So being really mindful of um, what oils you're using because <laughs> they don't have to disclose that it even has a fragrance in it but you can smell them if you know like the difference so i will say real quick here a little touch on that is as i was learning about what toxins actually did to our body um it was mentioned that the worst form of like us taking toxicity in is through breathing it in it's worse than putting stuff on our skin, um, breathing it in, getting it internally. And then I was told a story about a man who could not breathe. He'd go, he just got to where he just could not breathe. He'd go outside, he'd be okay. And then he would go to the hospital and it would clear up. And then he'd go back home. Well, it came to be his wife was running seven different essential oil diffusers in their home and his lungs were actually turning to leather. So I would say that she was probably not using pure essential oils. That would be my guess there. So we know they're not doTERRA oils. <laughs> so just a heads up with that. I don't know. It's, it's pretty scary. So just really educating others and ourselves. So that just leads me to um, that little rant there is by thank you to doTERRA for taking a stand against adulteration of essential oils and all of our other wellness products that they sell. It is such a relief to um, be able to order products that don't have toxins in them and that you don't have to dive through every single ingredient on the back of that and look it up in the book of the other products, not just the oils to figure out if they're safe or not. So thank you to them for giving us a partner for our wellness. It just makes it so simple um, for us. Okay, so just to touch on some of the products and the things that I highly, highly recommend um, as a skincare professional that doTERRA has to offer us. And that is just us becoming healthy from the inside out. So that's taking the holistic approach of giving ourselves enough uh, nutrition that we cannot receive from our food due to the depletion of the, nu the nutrients in our um, food that is farmed, um, et cetera. It's just the way it is. It's just due to the farming practices. Um, we ultimately really don't have a lot of control. Even if you're buying organic, um, that just means they weren't able to put all the chemicals on it. They still can spray them. <laughs> so um, that is, you're gonna find that in the Lifelong Vitality Pack, plus then our omegas, which are, are great for our, our skin and our joints and our brain function. And then it also has our alpha CRS, which is gonna calm the inflammation. Uh, for us, literally like a fire hose to our insides. So having that support is huge. Um, and a new addition to a healthy from the inside out approach is the new Yarrow Palm Cellular Beauty Complex. And it is a powerful antioxidant. It is a combination of yarrow, celery seed, which is great for inflammation, Frankincense, another one for cellular support. Palmarosa, turmeric, more inflammation. And Melissa, essential oils as well as pomegranate oil. And it assists in supporting the skin by combat combating oxidative stress, which actually ages us as well. Um, that's a whole nother as we dive more into the skin. I just wanted us to be really aware of like what toxins were, are in our, in our skincare stuff. 
Um, so the yarrow palm also uses vitamin C. So we're getting a dose of this vitamin C in a good, good way. And um, for antioxidant benefits, great, uh, that are great for the skin. Um, it is great for collagen synthesis vital defense um, against the oxidative stress and may even help regenerate other antioxidants in the body. Has grape seed extract. It's one of nature's most concentrated sources um, and is very powerful antioxidant properties. Also contains zinc and that is the second most abundant, abundant mineral in the body. It is found in every cell and is important for countless internal processes along with being used historically to support to support wound healing, it also has powerful antioxidants um, properties. And then also contains a melon extract, which has another high antioxidant. And so these are recommended to take one to two a day would give you enough, uh, enough of a dose. So taking them along with your lifelong vitality pack. And there's one other product I would also suggest um, for great skin health is, I forgot to put it on here, is the um, terrazyme, the digestive enzyme, just to help us get rid of the toxins and help ease our digestive system. And so many of our skincare issues stem from our digestive system. Uh, that could be acne, uh, rosacea, your psoriasis, your eczema, all of that can stem from your digestive system, whether there be too much yeast um, or that it's totally inflamed due to processed foods and our toxins that we're breathing in from the environment. So just really taking care of the whole body, you'll feel better, you'll be happier, you'll have more energy, you'll sleep better, hair, nail growth, um, glowing complexion, because if the body has enough nutrition, it can actually take care of a lot of those problems. So if you're seeing something on your face, that is actually a warning sign of something that's happening inside. Okay, so let's dive into how um, specifically the essential oils work with the skin. So we know um, that doTERRA CPTG gives us a natural, effective, and safe oil. That means they are potent, powerful, so we use less of them, very cost effective. So remember that spending all that money on all these creams that probably don't do anything but actually age you more. They don't contain synthetic fillers or toxins. They're easily, easily incorporated into your daily routine and you can tailor them to your personal preference because there's such a wide range of them that maybe if you don't like cedar wood, you can use um, like lavender or the frankincense to, to meet what you, what you like. So they are natural, powerful um, that, uh, properties in, and a lot of them address a lot of things, promoting clean, smooth, healthy looking skin. So they're cleansing, they can also be nourishing, and then they can also be soothing, depending on what you're looking for. So a single oil can have several different uses and provide a variety of benefits depending on its chemical design. Some chemical components will make an essential oil useful for cleansing and purification, while other components provide soothing or beautifying properties. Because each essential oil has a different combination of chemi chemical constituents, it is easy to find an essential oil that will fit into your hygiene regimen based on your personal preference, just kind of like we just discussed. So some of the best oils for skin, as you can see the list here. Um, so we have some woody oils on there, and then we also have some flowery oils. So woodier oils actually are great for down in our dermis, down in where the blood flow is. And then the florals are great for topical stuff. That's just kind of a little bit of a difference there. And always diluting, if you're very sensitive, um, you could add, add them to your current moisturizer, um, just making sure that you've 
done your research that that product um, doesn't contain any harmful ingredients. And then you can just add a few drops into your existing bottle or adding one or two drops to, to your palm when you've got it in there. Some of the best oils for cleansing, as you can see, I'm not gonna read all of them, but some really good smelling ones. And then here are some of the best oil for cleansing. Was, was that last one cleansing too? This one's supposed to be nourishing or cleansing, nourishing. Sorry, I flopped those. <laughs> so oregano, as you will see, um, must be diluted with carry oil or lotion before topical use. So my, my recommendation for oregano is skin tags. And um, Dr. Johnson's theory with skin tags is that there is some type of bacteria in those weaker areas or like, cause you can get them on your neck, um, along your bra line, armpit area where there's moisture and rubbing. And then it's just a little bit weaker spot in the system, maybe a little bit of bacteria going on there. So I like oregano touch. It's already diluted for you. You can just spot treat on your skin tags with those. Consistently, I bet they um, consistently use of it, they will fall off. Okay, so these <laughs> four here. So a simple way to start incorporating essential oils into your routine is I believe these four products everybody should use. Um, all skin types. So um, the Yara Palm uh, Body Renewal Serum is brand new as well, and that just came out along um, with the capsule. So this is for your entire body. Uh, they wanted to make something <laughs> that not just for our face, but you can use this on your entire body. And people are actually seeing firming in the areas. Um, so if you have a targeted area, you could use it specifically on that, that area, and um, the skin is actually firming up. There, so the, the serum has the highest quality ingredients and science um, that they've studied with the yarrow palm. Um, it has a combination of our doTERRA's certified pure therapeutic grade oils, um, including yuzu, yarrow, Roman chamomile, peppermint, and ylang ylang. And research has proven, um, the res research proven to improve the look and feel of your skin, also included our conditioning and moisturizing agents as a powerful antioxidant. It was formulated based upon the most current evidence-based research. So I'm gonna read just a little bit. So experimental research suggests that yuzu, yarrow, and Roman chamomile may help keep the skin looking clean and healthy. One of the conditioning agents, coffee seed extract, is rich in essential fatty acids, sterols, and vitamin E, which makes it great for smoothing and rejuvenating the skin. We also has jojoba oil extracted from the seed, um, Simona Disa plant. It shares many of the same characteristics as the sebum, which is the oil that our skin naturally produces and to regulate moisture levels and it's most clinically tested skin moisturizing agent. Also has esters derived from the pomegranate seeds that have been shown in experimental research to maintain the appearance of healthy and smooth skin. Um, highly antioxidant, um, let's see. It was also shown to help, um, that it can, one of uh, the antioxidants, uh, let's see here, it's a form of vitamin E, is the most common form in skincare products because experimental research has shown that it may help maintain healthy and youthful skin when applied topically. And then like all um, skincare products, the effectiveness of Yara Palm Body Renewal Serum relies on consistent use to increase moisture levels, slow down the breakdown of skin proteins, and give your skin a youthful glow. Apply twice a day by lightly massaging into the skin until absorbed. 
Um, okay, so the next one over is the Yarrow Palm Essential Oil or the Nutritive Duo. And um, so how I would suggest this, this could replace like an antioxidant serum. If you're already currently using one of those, you could add it um, to, you could add it to your moisturizer. Um, my favorite way to use it is one to two drops of that with two, one to two drops of the frankincense. And actually with just those four drops, I can cover my face, my neck, and then um, my decollete, the top of my chest. And then I like to use it just like that and then apply other serums or your moisturizer. Um, so the Yarrow Palm has a wide variety of benefits topically and internally. So let's just focus topically <laughs> since we're talking about our skin um, cosmetics. Um, it is very unique. doTERRA is the first one to ever combine the two like this. Um, so the way uh so yarrow products in general have become increasingly popular due to a wide range of benefits they provide um yarrow essential oil has a high shimazzling content and is a great source of beta carotene. so the shimazzling is what it's a blue color that's what makes it blue the beta carotene is great for our endocannabinoid system um it's great for the skin it's similar to other blue oils, unlike blue tansy, which can only be used topically, um, but not internally, aromatically and topically. Yarrow is recognized by the FDA as um, safe for ingestion and Yarrow products on the market. Um, so this is another little scary thing about it is many of the Yarrow products on the market contain um, Thujone, which is a chemical that is toxic to the nervous system and should never be ingested. However, the doTERRA yarrow oil has been tested through the CPTG process to ensure it does not contain um, not any traces of that. So I thought that was pretty interesting that doTERRA actually took the next step to figure out how to source it so it wouldn't contain that or to distill it. Um, so again, with the pomegranate seed, it's um, Is, very, is a carrier oil blend. It's also packed with some beneficial qualities that you might not be aware of. Um, it is extracted through cold press, which has been found to have much better um, physiochemical and nutritional qualities compared to um, the pomegranate seed oil being extracted through other methods like CO2 extraction. Um, their cold pressing method provides a high amount of crucial fatty acids, which also keeps um, also keeping the resulting um, pomegranate seed oil free of impurities. So when you incorporate it into your regimen, it has the potential to promote a smooth, youthful complex. Both yarrow and pomegranate seed can help to moisturize and restore healthy looking skin while also working to reduce the appearance of skin imperfections. Um, a special proprietary blend, this essential oil works to activate protecting proteins within the skin in order to protect the complexion from enzymes that break down the collagen and elasticity. So to take advantage of this, um, you can apply the two to apply it to you topically, and then you're going to get the source uh, of the antioxidant benefits in the supplement internally. So um, Megan, her question was, is like she was seeing things um, firming on her chin along her jawline as she was using the yarrow palm, and she was like, "Is it just me, or is it really working?" So my understanding and my belief is is that it's helping the proteins so that it's giving the the skin a little bit of added food so you are probably seeing um a little bit more of the firming because it's help aiding in the daily process of the skin feeding itself and taking care of itself that would that that would be my kind of understanding of it i could and belief in it um there wasn't a ton of um, as I was like searching a ton on the doTERRA site, because I kind of wanted to see exactly what the, where they were coming from with it. Did you have a comment? Well, and um, so recently, so since I noticed that with my chin, um, I used the body serum because I just got done being pregnant. So I have a little bit of a stomach left. And so I've been using it on my stomach and I seriously should have taken pictures because I'm like, 
holy cow, it's only been a week and a half and it's been more different than in five, six months, she's six months now. And I remember that challenge and it, I think I was pregnant, so I didn't do it. But the waistline challenge that when the arrow palm first came out. And so I didn't know if it was related to that, but yeah, thank you for looking into that. Cause that, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I'm like, if it's just doing that topically, imagine what it's doing for the body internally and helping aiding. So I say sandwich them both. <laughs> you can even do a couple drops of just the oil internally. Um, but yes, it helps support a healthy metabolism and it helps to budge that stubborn fat. There's a combination of oils that go into that skinny jean challenge is what it was. Yeah. Skinny jean. So the capsules uh, is what you take or do you put the oil in a, in a veggie cap? Uh, you can, so the, you can take the, um, I like the idea of the veggie cap that they've made just because it simplifies it because the yarrow is in that and so the other oils that go in the skinny gene are pink pink pepper black pepper turmeric and then you can add some frankincense so i don't see why you couldn't just take the yarrow palm capsule and then just do a veggie cap of those other four oils i don't know what do you guys think i i would say so it's already got it in it i don't know you're muted. Megan, you're muted. I must have thought I was unmuted. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so I haven't um, looked at the ingredients on the yarrow palm capsules from doTERRA yet. I, I just kind of put them in my closet and went on my way. Um, but yeah, that would be cool. But I, yeah, yeah, now that you say that, I have not been taking it internally, but let's, get, let's, let's do that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's, anyway. All right. So frankincense. And I really like the frankincense just really quick is uh, the cellular support. So you may see, I know Stephanie had a question about uh, pigmentation. Um, and I kind of have that on my next slide, but what happens with our pigmentation, there's a couple different, one can be a hormone induced, which is our melasma, what would be called classified as melasma. You might see that a lot around like the lip area, the chin, maybe the forehead. So that can be caused from birth control. You see what pregnant women get them just because of fluctuations in hormones, but it also can be increased by the yeast that's in the body. So that terrible yeast that can cause our acne, um, rosacea, lot, lots of different things. So um, being aware of that as well. So she was talking more about um, the pigmentation of the hyperpigmentation of just like a darker spot, um, most likely caused from the sun. And what that is, is inflammation underneath. So there's some cellular damage and the, the, the dark spot is like a cover, it's like an umbrella protecting that damaged cells, damaged cells, protecting it is what it is. So it doesn't get any worse. So um, this is my theory is, Frankincense is known to lighten dark spots. So by it being able to, because it, remember it's a woodier oil, it's actually getting down into the dermis where our cells are and the blood flow and where the melanin sites that the darkening, um, even when we get a tan, that's melanin and that's just protecting us. A suntan is actually a protection. Um, but I feel like with, Frankincense cellular repair actually goes in and actually heals that inflammation or that um, the cell that's damaged. It's giving it the, the, the food it needs to heal and to reset. And so you may see some lightning going there. You can do some topical, but a lot of that stuff causes more inflammation and really doesn't work. So until you actually truly heal what's going on down underneath, you could lighten all day long and you're not going to get it to budge. Um, pigmentation is really a tough one um, to work with, but I feel like frankincense works really fast. And that was just before I was aware of that, like a couple of years ago or early on in my skincare career, let's say, and not under really understanding that, that um, we're taught that, oh, exfoliate, exfoliate, that'll take it away. Well, that's really not necessarily true. It can actually make it worse. 
Um, the other one that I really like is the Immortel, the anti-aging blend. So this one can be diluted down. I would suggest that, especially if you're highly sensitive, but just around the eye area is going to help with those fine lines that um, you can really tell how, how well people take care of their skin by their eye area or their whole body. You can read a lot about a person from, from their face. Um, but I like the Immortel there. You could add it, you know, add it for the whole face. Um, for, I like the forehead too with it and you could even do the lip area, but wherever you're prone more um, to wrinkles and it has also been talked about actually helping people's eyesight. So why not <laughs> take care of your eyes and um, the skin around? So diluting that down with coconut oil, adding it to your moisturizer or a serum. Um, I like that, that idea. Okay, so yeah, these are some common skin concerns. So pigmentation we talked about a little bit, and then acne needs to be treated from the inside out, not by an antibiotic, because it's not actually an infection. So, um, and plus Accutane is horrendous on the body and it can take the body years to recover from. So if the, a doctor wants to put, put your kids or somebody you know on that, absolutely tell them no. <laughs> it is terrible. I just found out my nephew was on it. I'm like, get him off of it. Oh, he already completed it. I'm like, oh gosh. Guess what? He, out of the four boys of my brother's kids, is the one that's sick all the time. I just had a conversation with my brother this morning, so that's why it's fresh, but anyway. Um, so it's a candida balance. It could be a horm hormone imbalance. So again, by um, eating well, taking our supplements, and just taking care of the inside, that helps tremendously. Maybe ask your body um, what it needs to get rid of too. If you can get somebody just to, they know if you get quiet enough, you, you know what you need to get rid of. We actually had Haley and I actually have a friend who, um, very intuitive, um, but she healed herself of acne as a teen by just asking, okay, how do I get rid of this? And it came to her to quit eating bread and it went away. So, um, Pigmentation, we talked about cellular damage or hormonal cause. So I thought this one was interesting. Puffiness under the eyes. And I just thought it, it's um, correlated <laughs> with toxicity. And this is just from, again, Dr. Ben Johnson. And he thinks it's a collection of toxins that accumulate in the fat cells in our eyes. So, you know, whether you consume alcohol, I can, I can tell if I've had a few drinks the night before, maybe not enough water, yes, dehydration, but who knows what toxicity, it's just dumped right in here in that soft tissue area. And be very gentle with your eyes. Um, so that completes my ra rambling <laughs> of toxicity. I, I, I struggled with how far we go. I feel like we have to have another class specifically, like I wanna dive into the skincare um, and I'd probably do it piece by piece. And then if people have certain um, issues, addressing those more singularly, and then maybe what oils will help with that. But this is just kind of a brief overview. Get the toxins out of it. Get the oils in your skincare routine. Um, does anybody have any questions? No chat. Thank you so much for going into the detail and the toxins and all those chemical names and that's not easy. <laughs> so no. thank you. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for um, getting on and bringing your questions. But yeah, that was a huge one. I just wanted to tackle like what are just some that we can just easily kind of pick. Uh, I do want to work on like a comprehensive list of just because there's it's scary what I was reading. I might have a list. So when I was with the, um, with the federal government, the sister agency, the FDA, so everything you were saying there, I'm like, yep, all that is true. Um, <laughs> we did come up, my, my boss was a toxicologist, and so she came up with a list of endocrine disruptors in the cleaning chemicals that were being used at, at preschools and head starts and daycares, and we were trying to then take those lists out to the folks and saying, you know, hey, could we not, you know, can we look through your cleaning chemicals and if it had something on this list, let's find an alternative. 
And so I might have a list if I had saved it from those days. But yeah, it's super imperative. And, and when it's you know, impacting our young little kiddos, it's even more um, important to get rid of. So yeah, I might have a list. So you won't have to spend your time doing that again. Yeah. I saw, I did find a couple lists, but I thought, oh, that would be just a, I do have the cosmetic ingredient book. Then that's what I was gonna put a list of like my resources, but this one is where I got a lot of the info about the FDA and it is just incredible. I had no, I mean, I didn't know how lax it was. Truly, and I'm like, here's the FDA so concerned about what doTERRA is saying, right? Right. So and the other thing was, is these cosmetic companies pour so much money into our presidential campaign so that they will not change these laws, so they don't have to change what they've spent millions of dollars on. And the other thing too, and I think you you hit on this too, and I just wanted to repeat it. Um, so if a, if a drug company wants to bring a drug to, to the market, um, it's up to the drug company to do the tests and, and ensure it's safe as much as they can. They don't do it. Anyways, that's a whole other topic. Um, but with these chemicals coming to market, there's over 80,000 every single year coming new chemicals on the market, and it's up to the EPA to prove that they are unsafe. The EPA does not have the time, the money, the resources, the talent, anything and it's coming onto the market at 80,000 chemicals a year like it's you know and the the onus on proving it's safe should be on the company who brings it to market not the EPA so yeah we're getting just because it's out there doesn't mean it's safe and doesn't mean it's even looked at <laughs> so yeah that's what it's so crazy to me so guess what it's our mission to just open up our mouths and share <laughs> Because to be honest, like I'm out of my um, lotion and because I'd made like this huge thing of body butter and I was like, oh, I'll just use this through the winter and then I'll, and so I'd already placed my order and I'm out of my body butter and I just haven't had a chance to make, but I'm like, I don't even know what lotion to go. I'm like, I'm not going to go buy it. I'm like, I'll just kind of, <laughs> the kids have like one of the doTERRA baby lotions I've been using. <laughs> Because they were out too, and I'm like, oh gosh. But it's so, like, maybe I'm a little crazy, but it's scary. So the other thing is um, that app, uh, the Dirty app, um, Think Dirty, like even trying to find, like, feminine hygiene products. Did you know they don't have to label anything, ingredients on theirs? I didn't realize that. That's so scary. They didn't have to label. That's so scary. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize they had ingredients. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess I'm thinking like tampons and stuff like that. I didn't know they was ingredients. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, that's interesting. Well, fragrances <laughs> added to them, scent. Mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah. not. Good. Haley, do you have a question or something to say? Oh, I just was saying that that's scary and disgusting and. Um, yeah, I started using like more of a natural organic tampon, TMI, but <laughs> I can tell it just made me feel better too. It, that, I know that sounds so weird, but I can tell a huge difference since I started using them. Hmm. Yeah, it's nuts. Good to know. Thank you. But it's okay. TMI, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just going to stop the recording. So thank you everyone for joining us today.